This podcast contains adult themes and language, and some of the things we discuss may be disturbing to some listeners. In this podcast, we discuss sexual assault, torture, race, and murder. Listener discretion is advised. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Bienvenidos, bitches. All the Fruit things. Loops, all the things. <laughs> Fruit Loops is a podcast about true crimes committed by people of color and the victims that we don't hear or know much about. Contrary to popular belief, not all serial killers are straight, cis, able-bodied, white dudes. What? No. There are many well-documented cases of serial killers of color in Fruit Loops is a podcast all about them. We will take deep dives into the fascinating lives and crimes of serial killers and true crimes committed by people of color and the victims that the media and entertainment commonly leave out because the news is racist. (laughs) Get out of here. Just kidding. (laughs) Allegedly. (laughs) And we are Wendy and Beth. She's Wendy, a black Latinx woman. And I'm Beth. And I just happen to be white. We forgive her. It's not her fault. (laughs) Yeah, sorry about that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> We're not journalists, investigators, or psychologists. Just a couple of gals interested in true crime. Also, the opinions expressed in this podcast are just that, our opinions. Please send any questions or comments to fruitloopspod at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 602-935-6294. 6294. And we may feature it on a future episode. <laughs> also, our website is fruitloopspod.com and we use Fruit Loops Pod for all our social media. The footnotes for each episode can be found on our website. Plus, check it out for the different ways that you can support the show and become a Fruit Loops patron. Yeah. You can also support our show by supporting our sponsors. Yes, please do that. So, who are we talking about today, Beth? Well, we've been on a break, as you mm-hmm. all know, and mm-hmm. next week we'll resume our regular episodes and we'll be starting with a doozy, Samuel mm. Little. You guys oh, have been boy. asking for it and we got it Finally, for you. Yeah. we got it. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> but today we have a special episode. It's an interview with a father whose son has been missing for over a year. Daniel Robinson was last seen on the morning of June 23rd, 2021, leaving his work site in Buckeye, Arizona. He was driving his 2017 blue gray Jeep Renegade and is believed to have been headed west deeper into desert terrain. On Tuesday, July 19th, 2021, Daniel's vehicle was found by a rancher a little over two and a half miles from from the work site in a remote part of the desert. On that day, the rancher reported the vehicle to Buckeye Police Department, who later did a search by ground and drone. The vehicle was recovered, but Daniel was not. Daniel has an innate passion for adventure and is known to travel in opportune moments. However, he always communicated with his family on his travel plans. That day, Daniel was on a job when he went missing and was said to have been last seen by a worker from another company who worked with him at a well. He made plans to be with family before going missing and looked forward to that meeting in July of 2021. Daniel is a scientist that loves nature, loves his family, and expressed plans for his future. A missing persons report was filed the evening Daniel was last seen, and since then the family has utilized all avenues to get law enforcement's help by asking them to launch an investigation into what happened to Daniel. You can go to the family's website to donate to the cause and or discover other ways that you can help to find Daniel. It's pleasehelpfinddaniel.com. And uh, Daniel's father, David Robinson, spoke with Wendy at CrimeCon. Yeah, it was an honor to um, speak to him, although I wish we never had to because I wish that he was never in this um, situation. situation. Um, And it's actually the one year anniversary uh, was uh, not too long ago, a couple weeks ago of Daniel's disappearance. And his father is still posting every day on all the socials. If you know something 
go to that website. If you know something, call this number. Um, he's never given up hope. It's just remarkable, his composure that he's able to maintain yeah. um, in the face of such a really difficult tragedy, the loss, the, the loss of your son and not knowing where he is or what happened to him. Yeah. And what's even more fucked up is law enforcement isn't helping him. And... Uh, I have a couple of reasons why I think that yeah, is. Yeah, starts with the R and ends with the acism. Mm-hmm. Um, and plus another thing too is you know Buckeye is not a very big city, no. so it might be a municipality that has limited resources. But Daniel Robinson's father has like reached out to every agency he can for assistance. There's been a lot of really fucked up stuff that you'll hear has happened throughout his efforts. Like um, he had to pick up the car on his own. Like it was, it wasn't the police wouldn't pick it up they and didn't. maintain it as evidence. Uh, yeah. Um, so he had to do it. Wow. Um, he's having to fund this, the search efforts. People are out there in the desert searching every day, trying to help and volunteer. Um, and hopefully with, hopefully this effort th- that he's putting forward will not be for not Daniel will be found, um, that his family will get answers. And it was just an honor to get to talk to him and share, um, this interview with y'all. Um, also, I'm not a professional interviewer, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, here's the interview. His disappearance to uh, some things about the case and also uh, my efforts to find him. So um, we have talked about your son's case on our show. Um, we are a show that covers um, marginalized people of color um, in the true crime world who go missing and murdered, who don't normally get their t- stories told. Right. What we know about Daniel, and correct me if I'm wrong, is he is a geologist. That's right. He went out to the desert um, and wasn't heard from for a long time. And what the latest is they found his clothes and they found his car, but not that's him. Right. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, well, you know, that's of course. Yeah, he's out there. He's a geologist. He's on the job. Uh, yeah. He's on the job, doing his job out there. Uh, almost 30 days later, the vehicle did show up. Uh, everything's went on his body, his clothing, socks, underwear. Uh-huh. So everything's on the ground in the pile. Yes. Which police department is is helping you? Well, you know, I'm not getting much uh, at all uh, moving from the law enforcement. Of course, they have never supported any of the searches out there. Um, you know, saying that, uh, as an investigative stuff, they I have everything. So they, um, they, they don't have anything to do an investigation with. Uh, everything was turned over to me um, from day one. Uh, you know, after the first day, vehicles found. Uh, so right now I'm just still pushing them, pushing them, try to see if they can do more in this case, uh, bring the FBI into this case, and also just to change the status of the case. Right now it's still, he's still classified as a missing person. There's no criminality there, no uh, suspicious circumstances to them. Uh, I just want to get those things changed. I'm sorry, did you say they don't believe there's any sub- suspicious circumstances? No foul play at all, yes. Wow, and the FBI is not involved yet? They're not, I did request. Of course, I did request, uh, did put letters out to the uh, Buckeye Police Department. Um, they eventually uh, said yes. Uh, according to my letter, my letter was very striking. My son went missing in the crime scene. Yes, you know, uh, my searches we recovered uh, human remains, um, even the human skull. So my son oh. went missing in the crime area. Um, okay. So we did uh, have them to say, hey, they're going to go ahead and get a, a, a case review with the FBI. Uh-huh. Uh, so they did have that case review without me, of course, uh, huh. even though I requested it, my attorney and I. Uh, but they came back and told me the FBI uh, said that I was doing such a great job as a father on my own. They don't need to come in. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, that's what I was They told. said that's outrageous. The Federal Bureau of Investigation, who is supposed to help American citizens, <laughs> yes. told you that you got this? I, I guess I'm doing I'm a out, better job. I'm, I'm <laughs> so. out. I mean, it sounds like you are doing a lot of work, but it feels really unfair that you have to be going about this. You know, it's disrespectful. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know good or well that's not right. Uh, right. You know, I don't think the FBI would say that. I just think the, uh, the department is telling me that. They think they can say things like that to me and uh, just get away with it. Now, um, what can people who are listening, who want to help, what can we do to help sort of, get to the bottom of this and get your son found or um, close this case? Well, uh, one of the biggest things is support. You know what I'm saying? Uh, prayers and support is definitely good, uh, but support. You got uh, it. Please help find Daniel.com. Uh, everybody can go on there to sign a petition. The petition can help 
uh, by putting that awareness. You know, it, the petition is your voice. Yeah. And so people sign that petition. It's not just a number. It's actually a voice. I have people standing behind me and say, hey, look, we're going to fight against the department to make them do their work, do their job. I need those petition signs. So on the on the website, you get the petition sign. Okay. You also can have uh, ways you can uh, help, like volunteering to search or volunteer to pass out flyers. Oh, you can uh, still volunteer to search the oh, area. Yes. Well, you know, I, but I did uh, uh, close my searches down. Not close them down, but I put it on pause okay. right now okay. uh, because of funding. And right uh-huh. now, I'm still trying to get funding. So I was going to go there next. You also have a, a GoFundMe okay. uh, on the website. You can go to the GoFundMe, uh, donate. Okay. Um, they help me with uh, my searches, help me with the forensics that I had to get done on the, on the vehicle, on the clothing, and everything. Um, I'm sorry. I, I hate to interrupt. You had to yeah. do your own forensic investigation. Yeah, I, sure, I sure do. And the only reason why is because, you know, at the, that vehicle was found in his clothing on the ground and everything that um, they didn't do any forensic work on the scene. Excuse me? Oh, they did. Stop they, it. They literally gave me the vehicle the next day. Oh, my they said, God. Hey, look, Mr. Rousen, here's your son's vehicle. If you don't get it out of here, we're going to tow it away. What? You had to pay storm fees. No. Oh, they literally told me that. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I am, oh, yes. My blood is boiling. Are you serious? <laughs> that's, 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 I'm serious, yes. How, how are you not, like, outraged, punching things? Um, yeah. Like, you know, wanting to fight. This is, I mean, I know you're fighting in in your, in the you know, the right way. But how are you keeping it together, like, just not enraged? Well, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm enraged a lot, you know what I'm saying? But I have to stay stay in a, uh, a certain uh, place for my son, for his sake. You know, you, uh-huh. can, you can do a lot, do a lot uh, just to keep your composure there and keep yourself together. Uh, I, can't not, I can't afford to get on the emotional set, uh, side of things. I have to stay focused, mentally sharp. The one thing we learned in the military, you stay mentally sharp, you keep your mission first. I keep my mission. So my son is my mission. I'm uh, keeping him first, keeping that mission first, and uh, uh, stay sharp and focused. But, yes, that, that vehicle was turned over to me the next very day um, it was found, after it was found. And, it, you know, like I said, it threatened me. Hey, Luke, get pu- it out like, of here. They punished you for your son's car being a piece of evidence in his missing uh, They didn't see it case. as evidence. They just said, hey, this, when it, when it, they gave me the clothing and everything also. Uh, the clothing on the evidence bag was marked for safekeeping. That means that this happened to your son. He's going to come up somewhere, and here you go. Here's your, his things. Uh, he's going to come back and get them. So um, have a good day, Mr. Robinson, and going back to South Carolina where you come from. That's the way I take it. And um, so, you know, uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to settle for that. You know, I pre- so. I, I'm, I'm glad you haven't, um, and I know that um, those of us who know about the case are eager to um, help as much yes. as we can, as I said. So um, besides – you know, your military experience, what else keeps you going throughout my this love ordeal? My son. Yeah. My love for my son. Yeah. He's my son. And yeah. He's my responsibility and I have to take care of that. So I have to make sure that he's okay. Um, I make sure he gets the justice that he deserves. Yeah. And uh, respect. You know what I'm saying? One thing, I'm not going to let people just uh, mischaracterize my son. He's a scientist. He's brilliant. Tell me about your son. Tell me, tell me what, what should we know about him? That is a family-oriented man. Uh, yeah. You no, know, young man. Yeah. He's my young man. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful for him. Uh, I'm grateful to have a son like him. You know what I'm saying? He's uh, very uh, outspoken. Um, he always want to challenge himself and challenge other others and siblings most of them. And, <laughs> yeah. um, you know what I'm saying? Everything he want to do in life, he achieved it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He graduated with honors. He's a, a, a geologist, a scientist. Yeah. He has dreams, aspirations, and goals. He loves his family, like I said. And uh, he made sure we know that. Yeah, yes. that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, does he have any siblings? Were there any siblings? Or is he, he your do. only son? He, okay. do. he is the youngest of his uh, twin sister and his brother. Oh, okay. Brother, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, as far as um, any leads, are there? Is there any promising leads um, to go it's, off of? It, we had one. Uh, I, don't say it's, I don't know if it's promising, but it's something we look into. I had to follow a lot of leads. It's, we have leads from... I see, think but I see you did this all here. on your own. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's and, terrible. And, and the leads I do have now is uh, one one that I'm working on now. And also, hopefully, the Buckeye Police Department is looking into that they say they are. Um, I have one guy come on the comment section on Twitter uh, describing that uh, someone murdered my son and they buried him out there in the desert. We, we're looking into those type things. Um, I hear things like that um, in the past. I even myself had death threats in, uh, when I first started uh, searching with my son. Really? But, oh, yes. Oh, yes. But, you know, so we look into all of that stuff. And, uh, Can I ask you a question? And I, I, I understand if you don't want to answer, maybe, maybe respectability. But do you feel like your son's race um, has anything to do with the fact that he hasn't been found yet or this case hasn't been solved? 
I do. It's the statistics shows that. Yeah. You know, as much as you try to go around it, you know, so I, I, I've tried a many times to try to look at it from a different light, but I was slapping in the face, you know, saying um, the media, from the media coverage to uh, the way the, the department's handled the case. Um, it, it, it's the less important to see that's, that's there. Yeah. I'm not saying they don't do it to other, other races also, but it's, it's always done to us a lot more. You're right. Uh, one of the biggest things is my son is an advocate for Black Lives Matter. Uh, he was um, out there, matter of fact, doing an interview for the uh, George Floyd uh, wow. uh, protest. He's out there. Uh, did an interview and things like that. So sometimes a little part of that make me wonder if it was a, a sense of retaliation that probably happened out there somewhere. We just don't know. So I'm looking into those things also. Okay. Okay. Um, I can't thank you enough for your time. Is there anything before we wrap this up that you want to say that you think is important that we should know? Anything. Well, you know, we have the Daniel Robinson Foundation coming up here. Uh, we've been filed already. So um, look forward to seeing that. That's to help um, families look, not to go through the same thing I'm doing, going through. You know, oh, so this is for everybody. Collective community assistance. Right. Especially people of color. Black Absolutely. people yes. uh, mainly. Uh -huh. um, they have the disparities. We're going to try to kill those disparities that's out there, um, you know, between uh, what happens in uh, black communities and also happen in other communities. I'll try to bridge that gap. Because, you know, it's a lot of families, like like you said, just don't have the, the don't get the word out there, don't get the, uh, uh, of their loved one, just don't have the resources. They don't know who to turn to. Law enforcement is not going to help. So, you know, you got to have somebody to turn to, and hopefully the foundation will provide that for them. Well, I just want to say thank you again for sitting down with me. I thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. Thank, thank you. you for your commitment and your good work um, in the face of such uh, an awful yes. uh, situation. So God bless you, sir. Um, and just thank you. I can't God thank you, you enough. Um, thank one you. thing I might have forgot on the recording to um, okay. get your name. So would you mind stating your name for me one more time? Yes, uh, David Robinson. Okay. Thank you so much, right, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless. God bless you too. Okay. Um, well, that was the um, interview of David Robinson, Daniel Robinson's father. Again, go to pleasehelpfinddaniel.com. And that's it for this episode. In the meantime, Beth, where can the people find us? Our website is fruitloopspod.com and we use Fruit Loops Pod for all of our social media. Join our discussion group on Facebook at Fruit Loops Pod Discussion. If you want to support the show, you can send us a donation on the Cash App. Just Google Fruit Loops Pod Cash App or you can become a a monthly patron through Patreon. This will help us pay for things like our website and pod hosting. There's no minimum and no commitment. Even a dollar would help. And as always, we have merch for sale on our website. Very true. These are all facts, yes. factual information. <laughs> now, this is a weekly podcast and new episodes drop every Thursday. So until next time, look alive, y'all. It's crazy out there.